have won the test match. India have won the series. They're going to get back for two. India home. Lords goes wild. Hello and welcome to a new episode of the 81 All Out podcast. This is your host Siddhartha Vaidyanathan, and I'm joined today by the regular crew, Mahesh, Ashoka, and Kartikeya, to talk about uh, you know the second week of the World Cup that's ongoing. Uh, we'll start primarily with the marquee fixture, as it was, as it is often labeled, the India's game against Pakistan. But India also played a game against Afghanistan earlier in the week, and there's been um, a lot of uh, other games going on, uh, quite enthralling. Uh, we still haven't had like a nail biter as such at the World Cup, but I think uh, there have been there's enough to talk about, and uh, enough themes developing, and we've you can listen to our. Uh, review you can listen to our review of the week one if there is a sort of we will be sort of continuing from there we won't be talking about things we've already touched upon anyway so uh, comfortable seven wicket victory for india against pakistan comfortable eight wicket victory for india against afghanistan uh, i think the pakistan victory was even more comfortable than the afghanistan victory which uh, uh, would have been surprising if you had told me that before the tournament uh, but uh, i mean honestly there is uh, how much ever people try and market it as this rivalry and things it's hardly been a rivalry in world cups and in recent times the in one day years the gulf is it's clear that the gulf has grown uh, to beat india in a world cup in, in india in these conditions with their bowling attack it's really hard i mean it's not just uh, it's not about uh, pakistan being this uh, team bad team or something but any team could have collapsed from that position pakistan were going pretty well but i think uh, they were probably a little slow even at that time given the nature of the pitch but uh, 150 odd for two you would think that they would have probably got to close to 300 or try to push beyond that but india's bowling depth is uh, you know quite an envi- enviable thing umra kuldeep i mean these are these are bowlers that don't come along <laughs> you know, regularly you know bumrah is a once in a generation bowler kuldeep would have probably led india's attack uh, on in most other eras uh, you know it so happens that he plays in a time when ashwin and jadeja are playing but otherwise i can imagine kuldeep playing being india's lead spinner in a different era so yeah i mean that was uh, hard be surprising but uh, also showed india's class the batting well i mean they just pounded them with the with the good batting conditions and rohit sharma being in such awesome form uh, rohit also got 100 against afghanistan so yeah none of that uh, came as a big surprise to me but of course ultimately the game is uh, can only be the game for so long in these situations i mean it's uh, often so often taken over by so many other uh, factors that come in and honestly in a way and i it was a bit nauseating and it has gotten even more nauseating as it goes along you know i mean this whole india pakistan build up and hype and hype for the sake of hype because honestly there is no rivalry i mean they may be rivals but there is no real rivalry they don't play that often it's not like there is some shared uh, you know uh, some shared history that they have in the recent past or anything like that it's just these games they meet in the world cup which are hyped and which are taken into you know hijacked by commercial interest some performers in the before the game just for this game just for this india pakistan game the, when the world cup itself didn't have an opening ceremony and then the whole you know the uh, political slant with pakistan being this enemy and uh, you know it, it just gets nauseating to me and in a way uh, i feel like you know i, I go back to mike marcus's book right in the war minus the shooting Uh, where he basically says that um, as much as it's important for india and pakistan to play in a world cup at what cost is it coming at you know and uh, you think about that and he talk writes about it way back in 96 and uh, it holds uh, you know true even more true today i mean i think while you're watching an india pakistan game it is very hard to look at it purely as cricket because there is so much more going on anyway uh, let's bring in your thoughts on the matter uh, mahesh how was it uh, for you watching the game uh, don't talk fully about rohit huh? i mean let's talk about a few other things also i know the temptation is for you to uh, go on rohit pran but yes and also yes congratulations mahesh on rohit sharma's record uh, seventh century in the world cup thank you 
recently somebody tagged one of my old uh, tweets about why rohit should be dropped from odis and he this guy thought he was making fun of me little did he realize that uh, i never made a case for rohit to be dropped in odis that was an exaggerated case to make that as good as he is in odis he is far better in test so you know no matter how much he is in odis i always feel like this 5000 run runs you know stolen from him in test matches and i can't i can't come to terms with it you are the it's definition of greedy huh? you you like you you want uh, it's not enough for him to be an odi great you want him to be like a bradman in test also great 5 5000 runs stolen it seems <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah this is like different level man this is south indian parenting taken to you know on steroids like 99 is not enough 101 is needed no no no, no. south indian parenting is uh, you know they asking people like you and me to achieve a lot but rohit is that good that's what i mean i'm not going to ask that of my son okay so this is Continue. this is totally justified <laughs> so in fact uh, you know i was uh, hoping to give the man of the match to to rohit so that kd gets triggered And, uh, and you know uh, fortunately or unfortunately in this case they gave it to bumra and i was thinking when was the last time they gave the man of the match to a bowler who just bowled seven overs in the match like the guy just bowled seven overs and he got the man of the match which is incredible and any and like in a match where i think four other bowler, bowlers got two wickets uh, he was given the um, player of the match and i it think it was a bit of a competition for the afghanistan match when bumra <laughs> when bumra when rohit uh, basically got the i think it was a mistake <laughs> <laughs> it's just credit to india's depth of bowling right there's just no no place to hide and uh, even when siraj is not bowling all that well he still keeps producing the wicket taking ball every now and then and if you look at it like around like 28 overs when babar and uh, and rizwan were batting you know it looked like they're going to sort of consolidate you know the risk was that pakistan were not attacking enough or were, were not able to attack enough uh, and they might end up with a subpar score but it never looked like they were going to collapse like that but and and in a matter of 3 4 overs the just the sheer depth of indian bowling came to the fore right i mean he got siraj back he got bumrah back and and they are able to come and like split open that middle order and kuldeep was bowling beautifully like i mean between kuldeep and bumrah you have like two of the greatest uh, bowlers seen in this format and siraj is always attacking uh, and jadeja on a pitch like this is is not going to go for much sure on on a flat wicket it's it's a you know on a complete flat wicket it's a slightly different story uh it, it was just i think it was just asking too much of pakistan to kind of uh come through this relentless attack uh to to put up a big score even if let's say for instance if if let's say uh, rizwan did not get that beauty from bumra and uh, and babar you know did not get out they could have perhaps uh, built a decent score maybe 240 230 but they would have still fell short of what would have been a par score just because they just they had to take so much risk to to be able to score at a good run rate against this uh, this bowling lineup and and that's that's always going to work in their favor in the league games I mean, what happens in a knockout? I do not know, but in the league games in India, their bowling depth and their batting variety is going to take them through. Yeah, I mean, we spoke about this in the preview and in the week one review, right? I mean, this is like an absolutely awesome test bowling attack. I mean, you take uh, Siraj, Bumra, Kuldeep, Jadeja. Uh, I mean, Shardul plays test, but uh, Ashwin played the uh, Ashwin played as well in the. previous games uh shardul also plays test so eventually that phase when pakistan collapsed it was a very much like a test match phase where things just happen so quickly right i mean the uh, team is going at a pretty steady clip uh, maybe in the first session or session and a half and then you have this moment especially in in test in india we've seen this very often you have this moment where a wicket falls and then it just things just like rattle off then we've seen uh, bumra we've seen shami we've seen uh, siraj and us and the spinners do it time and time again and it felt very much like a test match rhythm while watching that uh, collapse yesterday and pakistan and no team has any answers to that man i mean forget pakistan with this lineup that is far from uh, you know great i mean after babar and rizwan there's a steep drop uh south shakil that doesn't have much experience um and then after that you're looking at uh, you know uh, people who can make probably a good 20 and 30 but they're not going to consistently come and make 
50 plus. So, yeah, that, that's what I felt. Anyway, uh, Ashoka? Yeah, so the interesting thing here is that uh, India got to play two matches back to back in a very, very similar way. Right? For, with, against both Afghanistan and Pakistan. Against both of those teams, they bowled first. And both of those teams lost early wickets, like two or three wickets. Then there was a big partnership. And after that partnership, the lower order kind of collapsed. And both of those teams, you know, were 100 short. Uh, Afghanistan were 272, which looks like a good score, but this was in Delhi, which is like a pitch, uh, which is a national highway kind of a pitch. So there you need 350, 360. So they were 90 short. Here, Pakistan were 190. Again, they were 90 or 100 short. And once that happened, then Indian batting finished it with like 15 to 20 overs to spare. And in both matches, Bumrah did well in the beginning, in the middle and in the end. In, in the second match, there was no end because Pakistan collapsed before that. But And then Rohit Sharma came and hit the whatever runs that were needed. So... India actually played two similar matches. Why I say that? Because Afghanistan and Pakistan have similar problems now. Because they are caught uh, against a team where they know that their lower order might not last long. So they can't take risks up front. So all they had to do was to take this match to a point near the 30-32nd over where then their lower order becomes like effective. It can come and play, you know, a 20 ball innings or a 30 ball innings, which will be effective. So that was what both teams tried and failed because of the fact that India has no holes in their bowling line. Obviously, now KD will jump and say they can hit Shardul. Of course, they can. But, you know, uh, you're giving up 40 overs. You, you, You... uh, Siraj, Bumrah, uh, Kuldeep, Jadeja, you can't hit. Or you can't consistently hit. So, so that's what happened. Both teams uh, found themselves against a bowling which they couldn't hit, which is you know, which is worrying for other teams now. Because if you know, if you can't find a hole against this Indian bowling lineup. How are you going to win against this team is a question that now other teams might want to figure out, like New Zealand, South Africa, England. Maybe in a pitch which is doing too much, then there is a little bit of parity between the two bowling attacks. Maybe then other teams can compete. But if the pitch is not offering much to bowlers in general, I think Indian bowlers defend better than, let's say, Australians have done or Afghanistan have done, or Pakistan have done. So, yeah, I think, uh, I think, I think that is the, that is how all this, these two matches have gone so far. No, I mean, on a flat pitch, the uh, one way in which I think the, this Indian team can lose, and that is a rare way, but it could happen is that uh, a batter like, you know, some, some basically, a great ODI batter comes and has like the best day and smashes like 150 and you know with all the luck that he can get and then a team basically puts a huge score so that that could happen I mean and especially in a semi-final and final situation that could happen like I can see a Glenn Maxwell for instance having like the best day of his life or uh, one of the South African batters just uh, teeing off Miller maybe or even Klassen but yeah that that takes that level of uh, freakiness on a flat pitch. Otherwise, this bowling is awesome. Or let's say uh, your batting collapses. Like they take everything that you hit in the air or even touch goes to hand. And then like that one evening of 36 for 9, you're yeah. all out for like one 150, 160 on a 300 pitch. Then you're screwed. I, I mean, outside of these two outliers, I, I don't think this team you know has too many things to worry about. I think I think England, New Zealand, and South Africa will play very differently compared to Babar and Rizwan. You know, Babar and Rizwan played 13 overs from Kuldeep and Jadeja for 48 runs. Uh, and I mean, the, from the 20th to the 27th over, those eight overs, 
they made uh, 29 runs against Kuldeep and Jadeja. Because that's when they were both bowling at the same time. Uh, and England, New Zealand, South Africa will not allow that. You know, they'll just, they will try to slog and they will try to slog sweep. They will try to, you know, uh, reverse sweep a lot more. I mean, they're prepared to take chances uh, when the bowling is on the stumps. And if they take chances and if they come off, some of them come off, then it will make India do something different. Right. So, I mean, for example, if someone goes after Kuldeep and hits him for like two sixes in a over, then it's a question for Rohit Sharma. No? Does he keep Kuldeep on? Does he change? You know, so someone will go after him and at some point it is going to come off. But the point is, even if it comes off, India is still going to win enough games to make the last four. You know, they're, still, they're still pretty good. You know, I mean, right now, I think these three games, everything has fallen kindly for India pretty much. You know, uh, they, they, are, they are good, but they are not going to get... No, no matter how good a lineup is, no, they are not going to get Australia and Pakistan out for less than 200 uh, in two consecutive games. You know, on, on on good pitches. So, I mean, let's not get carried away. I think there's there's a little bit of sort of you know, uh, I don't know what uh, big match fever or something like that. What what do you call it? Uh, although now that India won, they're not big matches anymore. They're just like you know, just like league fixtures. You know, I mean, and and okay, to some extent, it, there is an element of you know that. Babar and Rizwan are, compared to the top order bats of today, they are orthodox players. So Rizwan, for instance, is not going to play the reverse scoop or something like that. Or Babar is also not going to play that. You know. So they're, they're sort of going to, if it's not offline or off length, then they are not going to uh, take a chance. Oh, and and that that means that Jadeja and Kuldeep go a long way because they rarely mess up. I think I counted Jadeja, Kuldeep missed his line or length three times in sixty balls yesterday. Uh, and Jadeja, I don't know, like he, he now almost never misses. Like right? when was the last time you saw Jadeja bowl a full toss? You know, in a one day match, it almost never happens. Uh, so the, I think that basically that. The results have gone very, very well for India. Like, things have gone very kind. Things have fallen kindly for them. They won't always fall so kindly. I don't think, for example, that KL Rahul is going to go through the whole tournament without being dismissed. He's going to be dismissed. Uh, and he's definitely going to be dismissed with the game in the balance at least once or twice. Because that's the nature of the game. But, I mean, what we, ha what we do see is that India are forcing opponents to... in to doing sort of low percentage things more often than other teams. And the opposition bowling in Indian pitches is not able to exert that same stress or that same uh, challenge is, or, or, or is not able to pose that same challenge for enough of the 50 overs. Like that's, I think that's the way to think about it. Okay? Like it's not that both sides are going to face 50 overs, right? So, which team has the bowling to make as many of those 50 overs as possible challenging? And I think India have the bowling to do it better. Like, India have the bowling to make 40 out of the 50 overs challenging. I don't think any other side has that bowling. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying uh, we should get carried away. Uh, but uh, I think that one of the things that uh, they have hugely going in their favor is the amount of experience that the bowling attack has in these conditions, right? I mean, and bowling in India, I mean, in, in India, you get such a variety of conditions that it's hard for teams to suddenly uh, adjust uh, depending on what, whether they get a road or whether they get a slightly uh, spongy pitch or whether they get something like Chennai where things uh, things help the spinners. Yeah, and India that, have that enough is true, ammunition. In, yeah. India have ammunition, enough varied, enough variety of ammunition to sort of cover yeah. a wide range of bases. 
you know in, in, but i mean the, the thing about australia i'd also say is that india and south africa have been their worst opponents uh, uh not not their worst opponent, but south africa have been australia's most difficult opponent in the last say 6 or 7 years well, south africa won 16 out of their last 20 one day internationals against australia which have produced a result you know that's a next ordinary record and india it's the same with india against pakistan you know pakistan india have not lost a one day international to pakistan since that champions trophy that champions trophy yeah they have now won five straight you know so this is i suppose that both of those results were not really surprises you know i mean in the sense that you know the form book said that one side was definitely you know in the current era one side had definitely been winning way more than the other side although you know if if you if you close your eyes and if australia and south africa meet in say a semi final uh i'm pretty sure that you know the opinion the public opinion will be that australia are favored that it first of all of australia to enter the semi final itself will be a good story from here on yeah yeah I mean, they look, they, they, they look, see they have a chance man they have a chance see kd says you need six wins to comfortably get to the top uh, four which is true but with uh, minimum five wins you actually are in contention already it doesn't guarantee you a semi final slot but it keeps you in contention and five australia can do right because they have just faced uh, what india and south africa right? they've they had a tough faced... schedule yeah yeah so now they have netherlands afghanistan bangladesh sri lanka that's four which i think they are they they can win or at least three they can win and pakistan in this form they are going to play pakistan next i think in bangalore so you don't know which pakistan you're going to get no if uh, in in bangalore i would always put uh, australia as favorites because they have uh, enough uh, a hitting and ability to uh, in that small ground so yeah yeah so they can get five games very easily they can win five games easily uh so it's only a question of new zealand and england who they beat i mean if they beat both they are comfortably through so i mean uh, nobody is out of the tournament yet but uh, i do i actually wish uh that new zealand before right before this india pakistan match there was this new zealand and uh, bangladesh match which was slightly more closer than what the result suggested like new zealand won with eight wickets in hand and nine overs to spare but that was a match where everything that could go wrong for bangladesh went i mean uh, went wrong so if bangladesh had won that and let's say at the cost of people getting very angry if pakistan had won this match the world cup would have been like quite an open world cup as kd was saying but right now what has happened is uh, you know I, i am kind of this is my assessment that four teams are not going to make it i don't think you know uh, bangladesh it will be very tough for them to win five out of their seven sri lanka they their captain has gotten injured that's the official news uh, that and he is returning home i think kusal mendel is mendis is going to be the captain i think i don't know i have not read news further so they are not going to go is my thinking netherland and afghanistan are not going to go so that leaves only six teams with four slots and out of those six teams now new zealand look good they have won three matches india have won three matches so there are only two slots up for grabs with four teams no but you you so, made a point in the chat which i think uh, is a, like a good one we should mention here is that new zealand and australia have had like uh, uh, contrasting schedules right i mean new zealand have begun in the sort of the with a schedule that uh, you would any team would have loved to start with and australia have begun with a schedule that any team would have been wary of so i yeah. think it's a bit so new zealand and australia's results are a bit uh, sort of uh, uh, tricky to gauge because uh, as of now it looks like new zealand are way ahead but uh, the it's also a scheduling thing yeah see new zealand's first four matches first one they won which which was very good for them with a big run rate against england that was very good for them because their next three matches was against what netherlands 
Afghanistan, uh, Netherlands, Bangladesh, and Afghanistan. Of which they have, I think they have won against Netherlands, have won against uh, Afghanistan. No, no, one I against mean, Bangladesh, and they have Afghanistan Bangladesh. left. Yeah. Correct, correct. So, so they are very well placed, you know, to win at least three out of four or four out of four. They have eight points before facing Australia, India, South Africa, Pakistan. Yeah. So that kind of relieves your mind a little bit saying that, okay, we have to win one or two uh, instead of, you know, looking at this mountain to climb. Australia are on the other end of the spectrum. So, so yeah, they have been, I mean, off the field, they have been very unlucky. I think Kane Williamson again is not available. They have called Tom Blundell in. So they have not been very lucky. Uh, Saudi is not playing for them. Uh, he is also recovering from injury, so they they are essentially playing with like thirteen players out of fifteen. So things could have gone very very wrong for them, and but things have gone very right for them. So no, but yeah, that could also have an impact later in the tournament because uh, you know uh, the, the you want uh, enough depth to go through a tournament like this, and as we get as they get to playing like Australia, South Africa, uh, and other teams, they would they would want. To have those options, and if they don't have it, it could uh, uh, see because they are also playing in variety of conditions. They play India and Dharamshala, which I think is very good for them. I think they they it gives them a good chance with if the conditions are uh, what we have seen, like uh, with the England Bangladesh, you saw totally getting those wickets, and New Zealand seamers would love bowling on that kind of a pitch. So that, it's also that they they uh, if they get the scheduling to f- suit them. Then I think they're through, but uh, it could all it could easily, uh, you know, Australia could catch up at some point. Yeah. Uh, what else, uh, uh, Mahesh? You haven't said anything about Rohit hundred. You haven't said much about his batting. Come on. Forget that. Forget that. <laughs> Let's talk about the main event. South Africa hammering Australia. Pat Cummins needs to resign immediately. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Retire, retire. Just go. go retire. Home. Yeah. KD, uh, <laughs> I already said there's a case for dropping Cummins and putting a lion in his place. You're never ever going to catch me out on these things. What drop? You have to resign, man. Resign from Australian captaincy, Australian cricket. This is like the humiliation of the century. Okay, okay, okay. Coming back to the point. As much as uh, Pakistan's collapse against India was uh, one thing, but Australia's collapse against South Africa was uh, quite a joy to watch. I mean, come on, you have to take some joy in watching Australia collapse so spectacularly, man. I mean, that's, that's you know, that's uh, a treat that you don't get uh, that often in World Cup. So, enjoy it. Uh, that uh, that, that <laughs> Steve, Smith, Steve Smith dismissal and the reaction of Steve Smith and uh, Marnus Labushin... It is like the moment of the World Cup for me. Like it is like the perfect gif. No, no. Reaction is that fellow English, Josh English, that ball that uh, Rabada bowls him with, and that expression that he gives. That is the expression of the World Cup. So, can we talk about Rohit Sharma? There is a similarity between Rohit and Tendulkar. Uh, when it comes they to World Cup, from Bombay. They, no, they when it comes to World Cups. They are like the Excelsiors at stat padding against the Minos. No, like Ganguly, Ganguly is in a class of his own, okay? Yeah, exactly. He's got three hundred and ten thousand three World Cup alone. Are one is against Namibia, man. What the hell? One Namibia, two against Kenya, same against same with Rohit. Afghanistan, two against Bangladesh. What is See, this? This is where this is where you ignore the circumstances against which he scored against Kenya. This is the difference between uh, uh, Excel merchants and uh, people who are actually following. And context them. merchants. And context merchants. Okay. So hey, see, don't losing losing a parent is tough, and he came back and played. It it is tough on human beings and all that. I agree. But can we please agree that he faced Martin Suji, Steve Tico? No, no, no. Listen, listen. No, no. You're not getting the whole narrative. I'm not. Okay. No, no, no. You're not getting the whole narrative right. Sachin had to go back home to to for his personal reasons. It's not that he came back from that prep and scored a hundred against Kenya. In the one match that he was away, the yeah, Indian team they played against a Mino, the yeah. so-called Mino team, and they lost. So even against a Mino team for you to win, you needed Sachin. That's the whole point. Yeah, exactly. That Zimbabwe game. 
forever hey, they didn't lose everybody. because huh. they didn't lose because they didn't have sachin they lost because they pulled 50 extras in one game which is like a ridiculous amount of extras to be giving it doesn't matter <laughs> sachin would have compensated for that see you could exactly. have ramesh or sachin ramesh sachin ramesh is superior to saragopan ramesh <laughs> <laughs> even even uh, chennai's very own Mahesh has said this. So they bowled. They bowled. They bowled eight overs extra, man. Fifty, fifty extra they gave. What okay, okay. Now we are becoming Bakar Yunus and Tendulkar. Okay, now talking about Itihas and all. Okay. No, no. Now, let's finally. talk about Rohit. See, I am sick. Yes. I am sick of talking about Rohit. But you guys are not. You haven't spoken enough. Just talk. I want to listen to you guys talk about Rohit because oh, finally. I just- I just said he stacked padded against two minos. What nonsense! When one good team came against Australia, six ball duck. I know what will happen against England, New Zealand, and all that. That time I'll talk about Rohit. No, the one thing about him though that I that I seem to you know is quite nice to watch is that he's actually it seems that he's playing like in a Test cricket uh, sort of way only. Like okay, he's going after the bowling and he's doing he's uh, going in the air and all that, but. i can easily see him playing like um, uh, a few test knocks like this like uh, for instance that uh, chennai 100 against england uh, was uh, could i mean was basic this is the what he is doing now is basically that uh, perhaps like a uh, in that one day setting with the field and all and of course delhi was a road i am not uh, disagreeing to the fact that delhi was a road uh, but it's quite a it's quite a, it's different from what uh, you know you would see like the other batters like we are mentioning batters who are reverse uh, scooping and trying different things is a very very conventionally conventional like batsman in that sense like our as kd says in the modern context he is un- he is unorthodox because uh, uh the, he's not he's playing he's playing in a test cricket fashion but he's playing it in the one day game and the fact that he opens gives him that chance i mean in that way i think the similarity with sachin uh it comes in because sachin did the same thing back then right i mean he was uh, he had he was bringing in the technique of test cricket but he was using it to uh bisect the field and play at that accelerated pace so that that is definitely there and by the way this is not new for rohit sharma he's been doing that for many years in one day cricket but it's just great to see so that, that's, that's a very interesting point the, the i mean if you have to define it in the modern lens he is an, an, an orthodox in that sense but rohit has not always been like that right usually when he when he got his success in, as an odi opener odi opener initially he used to consolidate in the beginning sort of build his innings and then sort of explode towards the end but ever since he became a captain or around the same time he is kind of fully embraced this idea of front loading and and of course he does, he tries to do that in t20 with sort of varying results but even in odi as he changes game in the last perhaps 2 or 3 years where he is trying to accelerate a lot more up front and that kind of you know i don't think he cracked it immediately it took him a while to crack it and which is also why he is taking a lot more risks you know in these days as compared to his earlier sort of avatar as an odi opener and to be able to sort of crack that like towards almost the end of his career or like well past the midpoint of his career and to be able to do that without anybody forcing him to do it it's not like he was performing poorly and he had to retain his place and therefore he he tried a new way or whatever as he was having his like superlative success he was able to sort of play in this new way with with pretty much as much success as before and that's incredible i mean he's always had the game to hit big sixes but it's not easy to like be in a position to hit sixes uh in the early phases of your you know odi batting especially when he was not a batsman like that you know he's always scored big in like after he's set you know people always say after he scored 100 or 200 is always in the cards but you never look at him when he's like starting the innings and you expect him to score five or six sixes up front and that's a, i think a relatively recent change and there is quite a bit of change in his technique which could have completely messed up his batting in fact it, i believe it has messed up his batting in t20 t20s uh, of course i don't watch enough so fair disclaimer there uh, so that way it's a crazy combination of anorthodox and orthodox you know like it's just uh, and also like one of the things uh, i mean this is more like a political sort of statement rather than anything about rohit sharma in the current sort of form is that personally for me when you watch someone like rohit or when you watch someone like pant right you feel like cricket is so easy for them right and and in this sort of, sort of heavily corporatized narrative around sports these days there's always this extraordinary value added to guts and glory and nonsense right like i mean it's essentially about athletic ability that's why you watch sport you watch sport because somebody is so good at that that like normal human beings can't possibly imagine doing that 
And when you watch Rohit in this kind of a form, uh, you you kind of feel validated that, okay, you know, for them, cricket is just too easy. And, and you know, I have immense respect for people for whom something as difficult as batting comes so easy. Just one point here, talking about the evolution point, I'd like to, I mean, look at uh, dot balls also. Because uh, as you said earlier, the pace of his innings with uh, starting slowly, building up and then going on was apparent. I mean, in fact, that famous 264 that he hit of uh, 173 balls, I mean, that mega score, it had 58 dot balls. I mean, you know, think about think about what could have happened, you know, if, um, I mean, uh, of course, it doesn't work that way. You Every innings has to have a certain number of dot balls. But I would like to see the evolution of the the graph showing the dot balls that he faces too to see you know if if that has changed i think he's india's uh, best batter test batter and odi batter and has been for the last 3 4 years i know kohli fans will take offense but uh, it is the truth rohit sharma is our test, best batter test uh, pant probably until he got injured was almost there yeah no i mean uh, even when pant was there i think rohit was very, very good. He is capable in ways that Kohli is limited, okay? And Kohli relies heavily on, you know, his risk management. And his entire game is far closer to, you know, Pujaras than Rohit's. Uh, Rohit's is, Rohit is like far more attacking and far more, you know, flexible. I, I, not even flexible. He is far more capable of changing his game. I don't think Kohli is that. I mean, Kohli, the edifice of Kohli is built on how do I manage risks? How do I reduce those risks to near zero and therefore then score runs? Uh, and that is his one technique which he has successfully you know, applied to all, all formats of the game. And But Rohit is, I, I think, far more capable than Kohli. I mean, this may piss off Kohli's Kohli fans, but I feel this is the truth. He he has the game to attack, and he also has the game to you know uh, do risk management. So he is actually in in essence the last five years he is India's best batter. And I am not saying this because he hit a hundred and thirty and eighty. He has been India's best batter, and it's been a running joke in this pod not to talk about it. So that is what it is. No, I think uh, it's a fine point. It reminds me of uh, there was this uh, partnership uh, between uh, Lakshman and Dravid in Sydney in 2008, right? When India went there and that famous Sydney test, which is remembered for everything other than what happened in the game itself because of uh, Andrew Simons and Harbhajan and everything that happened afterwards. But uh, yeah, there was that day when Dravid and Lakshman put on that partnership um, a big, a big partnership, and uh, Dravid was, uh, you know, at one end of the spectrum. He was struggling to put bat on ball. He was, you know, grinding it out. He was not able to get a run for like, he was, he was stuck on like, uh, you know, a certain run for 50 balls. That kind of a day. And Lakshman was just like an absolute like pristine flow. Like there was nothing that could stop him that day. He was like, you know, that vintage Lakshman who, you know, you, he's just flying. He's like, what the hell? Ball ball is going to him and he's just smashing it. And Peter Roebuck had this line in the next day report where he said that uh, Rahul Dravid likes to bat. Uh, no, Rahul Dravid was spending a lot of time batting. VVS Lakshman was scoring runs. So it put the sort of the thing in context, right? The, between like batting, like the whole struggle of batting and scoring runs where this guy is just like, okay, I'm smashing it. So, yeah, that reminded me of that anyway. But even then, it's quite astonishing about how he's able to shift gears and, and play in a very different way. Uh, like well past the midpoint of his career, I mean, probably in the last 10 percent of his career, to be able to change a game which has given him so much success, it's not easy, right? Like, which is why, like, I mean, Kohli is not able to do that in T20s. Um, uh, K.L. Rahul himself is not able to do that in T20s. A lot of people have struggled to do that in different formats. Uh, but Rohit is able to do that in test matches, right? I mean, the way he got success as an opener is not the way he, he probably was meant to be the next big thing when he first came onto the scene. Let's assume he made his test debut in 2020 and, and went on to sort of have a long career. Uh, he wouldn't have played like the way he, he's playing right now, right? So to kind of reinvent himself as a batsman in like two, three different formats uh, at, at a stage where, you know, he can comfortably say, this is my game, this is the way I play, this is what has given me success. 
you know, tells you a lot about the confidence of the man that that he backs himself to make these changes and still be able to succeed. The way he is approaching this World Cup, and he's he's actually playing like a Sevagian kind of role, because in case that he doesn't get out early, he can score far more in the first ten overs than India are used to in in the last from let's say 2015-16. and that is the point of it that is the point of this approach he he it's not that he will every time go out and score 80 or 60 the point is the days that he does india are assured to set an above par total or chase the target quickly or have a yes. chance of chasing the target that's it uh okay no i'll uh, tell you i'll tell you something though i'll tell you something i think i i'll tell you something that i really think about rohit chan i think his batting in england in 2021 was like nearly perfect you know if you if you if you get if you if you ignore the fact that he's a compulsive hooker uh his his batting in england in 2021 was was perfect i mean the 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 balance that he had at the at the crease uh against the moving ball and this is not just any moving ball this is anderson broad and you know like top 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 quality ball uh it was extraordinary I mean, that was some like if you that that was that was stunning i mean that and and i don't really care whether he makes like a big score or not even when he makes 40 it, it's like extraordinary batting you know it's a, it's one thing to scratch away and like you know make 40 against anderson at some point you know get a lot of ag4s in this bat it's the another thing to sort of i mean very very few right handers have mastered their off stump uh against james anderson the way rohit sharma has maybe steve smith's done it you know but you know even with steve smith the 2019 ashes anderson was not there in this i think i think in this like you know there are like i i always think that there are two types of batsmen at the very 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 top level like one is the the instinct players who have a who have one game and who are like really good at that one game like i think ponting was like that i think tolly is like that i think uh, vvs lakshman was like that and then there are like the problem solvers you know there are the people who change their game over and over again and they try new things and they change some things and they play new shots and then they put away old shots and you know you can see the sort of the development in their game and i think rohit sharma is that second category you know steve smith rohit sharma sachin tendulkar these are all problem solver batters you know i mean yeah it's it's not just that the data people told him uh, and i know for a fact that they told him that you know india could be a lot more efficient in the top of the order uh but the point is it, it's it's one thing to take that in and it's another thing to do something about it you know and he is able to do something about it and that takes a lot of ability i think to to to, to change the way of playing like that just because he had gotten used to playing one day cricket a certain way for a long time you know in, for most of the 2010s he played one day cricket the way you guys were describing you know he started cautiously and then opened out uh and he could sort of look a little bit labored in those early in those early like a little bit like you know inzamam playing within himself you know uh, actually rohit sharma the player he always reminds me of is inzamam that he has that same amount of time against against pace he has that same ability to like basically take the speed of the ball out of the game entirely because he picks the length so fast so fast like that first shahin afridi ball uh, it was a little bit on more on leg stump than on middle stump the line and he absolutely lit into it like and and it was like a it was not premeditated it was not like it was just he saw it there and he he just turned a push into a into a flick and like that to ability to do that to ability to like expand like your normal game into an attacking shot uh, like like that is 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 quite a special skill and he's got that 
I mean, that's why he's made all these runs. So that's why I had to keep telling you he's really good. And you, you guys never listen to me. Shreyas Iyer made a quiet, calm run of ball half century yesterday. And nobody is going to even remember it. You know, when was the last time, 20 years ago, if an Indian batsman, especially not one of the superstars, one of the newer Indian batsmen, made a quiet, calm half century against Pakistan, you would be still be talking about it. In fact, we do still talk about one of those types of innings. Mohamed Kaif. Not against Pakistan, but against England. Yeah, and that Mohamed Kaif 35, the really slow 35 we made in that Centurion match. Yeah. <laughs> But this is this is not these are players of a different order, man. I mean, Shubman Gill, KL, Shubman uh, Gill. Virat I think Kodi. those Shubman Gill uh, drives, I think, are going to be remembered for many years to come. Shubman Gill, who made uh, very little, but uh, I think just those three shots will stick in the mind. Though you may not agree with that, KD, that looking at games through shots, but they stick in the mind what to do. No, no, you look at shots, no, but don't pretend that you're looking at games no, when you look at shots. You look at shots, you look at shots, fine. I also remember yeah, yeah. shots. I just told you one shot. But it's a shot, no, it's not the whole game. <laughs> <laughs> the the moment that shot was played, Pakistan knew that the game was gone. So that is what you don't want. Uh, yeah. Shreya Sayar, for to say one bit about Shreya Sayar though, I am absolutely in love with how Shreya Sayar plays spin. I think everybody should play spin that way. Of course, they can't because they're not good enough. But whether it's test cricket or one-day cricket, T20 cricket, spinners come on, he's like, okay, I'm going. That's it. Bye. Goodbye. Love it. That's how, like, that's the Sevagian approach to play spin. And I just love the way he takes it. Oh, he's exceptional. I mean, his, his ability to play spin is exceptional. I mean, we keep, like, it is all... Uh, like in terms of just the attacking instincts is as good as Sehwag. But he can also milk it. He's like a crazy combination of Sehwag and Dravid in that sense. In terms of playing spin. Um, but that's an interesting point. Because, you know, you, you that this is a point. I think you made this point before uh, also in one of the previous uh, World Cup uh, issues. In T20, you can do matchups. And if a guy is good against spin, you can push fast bowling at them and you know the batter can't really afford to sit back too long the batter has to take a chance at some point and so the the matchup is quite effective in in t20 in one day cricket it, it the the equation turns a little bit because see you can't just keep the spinner out of the game for 10 15 20 overs like that because that messes up your whole bowling, uh, you know, pattern. You know, you you can't you, you can't just hold like a, a spinner back. Like like India couldn't keep Kuldeep Yadav uh, out of the attack while uh, Maxwell was 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 still batting. Right? They they had to bring him in because it was getting too late for them. Like they had to bowl him. You know, so so that that whole matchup problem while it's while it's useful. The, the quota really affects it because captains also don't want to get into a position where, you know, they can only use full deep for like seven overs you know, because they run out of overs and you don't want your spinner. There are, there are parts of the innings where you definitely don't want to bowl your spin. Like you don't want full deep bowling the 48th over or the 49th over of the, of the, of the match when the opposition is four or five down. So, the matchups are an interesting. So the, the matchups present interesting conundrums. So this helps Raya Sahir in a way because teams will not be able to keep their spinners away from uh, Ayer in in India. You know, and in India teams will be set up to bowl like twenty overs of spin. So it's not like if the if the World Cup was in England or Australia, no, then you could have you could imagine teams bowling like four five overs of spin and 40, 45 overs of fast bowling. And then you can expect like, you know, Shreya Sayer getting over after over of seam bowling and no spinner to attack. But in India, that's not the case. I think that makes him a lot more effective in India. So we have to talk about uh, the bowling and Bumrah and uh, Kuldeep and everything also. So, yeah, I mean, coming to Bumrah, uh, uh, you know, the 
<laughs> sure delight of watching bumra is something that this podcast uh, takes a lot of uh, joy in we every time there is a test match is probably uh, a lot of discussion on bumra and over the years we have spoken so much about him and uh, you know the just to just to see bumra bowl has its own sort of uh, the anticipation that it comes with what he's capable of the variety that he can bowl the lengths the change in pace and it's like you know honestly speaking yesterday i was thinking back to you know the 90s stuff and wasim akram bowling you know i mean the wasim akram used to give that feel of you know capable of being doing doing anything with the ball you know the magician with the ball and you know they used to people the folklore was that he could bowl six different balls in the over or he could bowl the same ball six, six times in the over and still confuse the batsman right so and that is exactly the feeling i got with bumrah i mean you he can change it around as much as he wants or he can keep it as consistent as he wants i mean that was that was quite a spell to watch in the middle that's always a thing about bumrah right? like like you saw siraj right i mean siraj is relentlessly attacking which is fantastic to watch but he's also going to go for runs but bumrah is able to do that without leaking runs and and then he has that extra skill i mean the way he bowled the slow, the slow ball where did that come from like and usually and and with all the slow balls i mean i i kind of made that tweet with the which was just purely instinct uh, where i was saying marsh and uh, uh, robinson and rizwan on marsh uh, robinson and yeah. Uh, rizwan yeah but the more i think about it it's like in all those three instances it's not like he tried a few slow balls and eventually got one right pretty much the first time he tries it he gets he has a very good idea of what he wants to exploit and he is able to execute that so precisely on the first attempt i mean that is just insane talent and and it's, i don't know you know it's possible that i mean no it's not possible of course there are bowlers who are as good as bumra if not greater in the history as well as currently in other teams but just the fact that india hasn't had uh, a whole uh, assembly line of fast bowlers in the past and we had one great one perhaps like some marginally great ones but to have a full fledged great fast bowler in the team uh like i mean it's been years i mean we've been watching bumrah for a lot of years i still cannot come to terms with the fact that we have a bowler like him you know it's you know like it's you know we talk a lot about partisanship here and and how to kind of distance yourself from the team that you are sort of following uh, it's very easy for me to do it even when rohit sharma is batting but when bumrah is bowling i feel like yes i am an indian cricket fan this is what i've been waiting for all my life and finally i've got it i am going to make the point which all both of you elitists are not prepared to make you are not the, the elite deep state you know not prepared to tell the truth i am going to say you know you saw that off break from jasdeep bumrah to dismiss mohammad rizwan think what ashwin would have done on that pitch <laughs> no, no we'll come to that later injustice so, to ashwin <laughs> grave injustice this okay so now that using bumrah's uh, delivery to talk about injustice to ashwin okay okay that is the right. only point i want to make about just <laughs> there was an over against afghanistan right when those two guys were building a big partnership uh, shahidi and omar zai were were like this guy is brought in in the 28th or 29th over and he bowls four consecutive yorkers man and all four were like wicket taking i mean it it looked like he's going to take a wicket out of those yorkers and the first one was you know uh, out slightly outside off trying to hit the off stump the second one like came right into the leg stump to to the, to the right hander that guy somehow got something on it and then he crossed over then the left hander came this guy goes around the wicket and bowls the same slightly outside off but trying to hit the uh off stump yorker but this time it's a little bit slower and the left hander survives that then the last ball he bowls of i mean that same off cutter type slower delivery but it's a slower yorker so it's like a four different kinds of yorkers to right hander and left hander all four could have gotten like magic wickets that we will keep talking about for years but in that instance it didn't but just because it didn't i mean it escaped notice even the commentary was really dry man but he was bowling superlatively during that afghanistan match he he, he was amazing and of course he was amazing uh, that shadab bowled was amazing rizwan was great 
but uh, the pro point is that he was amazing the last two games i mean on pitches where there was virtually no assistance and he didn't let batters hit him 7 overs for 17 and 10 overs for 30 or 38 huh? a crazy man this guy is a crazy bowler he, he, you know you mentioned wasim akram back in uh, just now and he, he he gave an interview where he explained his bowling uh, really succinctly he said mar mar se bach jata hu you know so because in those days you are always you know running into jay surya and kalu and tendulkar and all these people are like with a new ball uh, bowling into them and and wasim akram would and and, and gil crest and all these people that uh, and uh, wasim akram's point was that you know whatever he does he does it to you know stop the opposition from you know scoring boundaries against him and and bumra does that too you you always get this and it's really hard to do that you have to be really good to them you know so uh i mean and, and bumra has got like all the sort of the equipment now he's got pace he can move the ball both ways off the seam he can bowl cutters he can bowl change ups uh and he's learned new ball i mean he's very much a problem solver kind of player you know he's 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 always learning new stuff and he's, he's learning to bowl new types of balls is learning to attack in new ways uh you know it's not just like you know i am going to bowl full and hope for late movement you know and even siraj is like that i mean siraj has got this india has this whole theory uh of bowling in india for bowling seam in india and this is a theory which is put into practice the best by umesh yadav mohammad shami and mohammad siraj and the, the theory is that you should bowl cross seam because when you bowl cross seam you get a lot more variation uh, in bounce and you get a lot more variation in de- uh, varying deviation also because the whole idea is that the bowler is always looking for something to that will happen off the pitch you no know? the ball will move in some way because if the ball goes straight it's dead you no know? it's going to get hammered so and and india's current sort of pet theory is that you should bowl cross seam so you see siraj bowls cross seam very early in the innings with the new ball you know uh, and perhaps i think this is made possible because there are now two new balls but uh, i mean for instance you can imagine that you know suppose india had a new ball pair of like bhuvneshwar kumar and mohammad siraj and mohammad Sir- and there was only one new ball that they were sharing and you had like mohammad siraj from one end bowling cross seam Uh, you know hammering the ball into the pitch and then you had on the other side you have you know bhuvneshwar kumar trying to bowl seam up you know that would they would get in each other's way you know so uh the india are lucky in that sense right now and that like they 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 have like bowlers who are not getting in each other's way you know whereas pa- australia right now do do have that problem i think we mentioned this last week also which is that they have three new ball bowlers so when one of them has to move to first change that's a big compromise it's a it's a really well assembled side but you have, it has to be said that you know it's easy to fit bumrah into any such assembly because he has, it brings so much to the to the to the bowling attack you know uh, i mean there will be games where he goes for 80 in this world cup but you know i mean they will i mean i'm sure india will play on some like road at some point you know uh, there will be games where he goes for a lot of runs but that's just you know how he <laughs> devil also score a lot of runs in those games just to expand on kd's point you know uh, with respect to indian bowling uh, that match when uh, sri lanka versus south africa where south africa made 420 odd they hit like 50 60 boundaries now on that same surface if they face india it's not like they are going to collapse for 180 that that surface is still a road but to hit those 60 boundaries they have to take far more risks it's riskier for them to hit those boundaries and sixes it's harder to hit the boundaries and riskier for them to hit the sixes than it was against you know sri lanka that's the point i mean they they would have to find the 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 bowl lengths that indian bowlers bowl 
whether it be jaspreet bumrah at seam or kuldeep yadav while spinning and jadeja it is going to be very hard for them to you know muscle it out or you know time it into the gap they they are not going to give you that many balls to hit to boundaries and therefore that creates a difference where where you say in a pitch 375 is the norm you don't get that many boundary balls to begin with so india i mean that's what monga has written in his recent article india don't see defensive bowling as negative bowling and they do defensive bowling really really well so that 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 is kind of a point of difference here yeah i mean i think uh, see the whole uh, Ind- indian indian bowling against pakistan can be will be put in perspective as the tournament goes along because i mean first of all pakistan came into this uh, game after chasing 340 something against sri lanka and you saw in that game right i mean they lost uh, a couple of uh, wickets but Abdullah Shafiq and Rizwan were then uh, you know they they had a chance to face the uh, bowling of lesser quality where you can open up you will get that boundary every over so the moment you get that then you know automatically you are finding scoring opportunities you're getting that 7 and over getting that 8 and over so i mean when you're chasing such a big target so and pakistan will bat well going i mean in games in this tournament it is not like they're going to fall for less than 200 they will score big runs so it's that time that this bowling performance will be you can put that in perspective like you know if there's a game where pakistan scores 300 you will realize that it is they have had those two or three bowlers from whom they can take those big runs anyway uh we will continue to review uh, the world cup every week uh usually our focus will be on india of course but uh, we'll also talk about other games and um, hoping for uh, a few close contests to also happen um, you know ultimately a world cup also needs its thrillers so we are hoping to uh, see that too uh, lots to discuss plenty of themes will develop as we go along we'll watch new zealand uh, you know how they progress they play india uh, in the weekend and before that india play bangladesh in pune they play new zealand dharamshala which i'm really looking forward to actually that game because uh, i think uh, both teams can uh, capitalize on the conditions there if they favor uh, fast and seam uh, bowling yeah plenty to look forward to and uh, thank you for joining us thank you for uh, supporting 81 all out through coffee that is ko-fi.com/81allout a lot of people generously have been putting in some money in there you know on a some of you have uh, set up like a, a monthly payment system some of you put in a one off payment we are extremely grateful for all that also uh, we are in the book republishing space and as i've mentioned um, earlier on the podcast war minus the shooting by mike markesy a must read book in these times especially when talking about uh, a tournament that is being played in india the sort of the you know the nationalism and jingoism and everything else that goes with it the hype and the general experience of watching cricket in india i mean mike really uh, went around uh, i mean he of course traveled to pakistan sri lanka and india in 1996 to watch cricket and uh, he describes it in such a beautiful way i think um, all of you will enjoy list- reading that book we also republished a book by mike coward cricket beyond the bazaar and a classic book by gideon hay uh, the summer game uh, so yeah all three really classic works of cricket literature so please pick it up thank you for joining us and uh, we'll see you in about a week's time goodbye india have won the test match india have won the series they're going to get back for two india